Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. A serious topic? Let's do it. People of Reddit, what is your scariest experience while staying in the hospital? Part 2. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I've got two that still shake me for different reasons. The first is the time that I had some minor internal bleeding issues that I was scheduled to have equally minor surgery for and ended up hemorrhaging as a result of the pre-op medication I was given. I knew that things were bad just by how dizzy I felt, but I didn't realize how bad off I actually was until three nurses came running into my room and two of them went running back out in opposite directions calling for help. The second isn't terrifying in the traditional sense, but in the implications. I was rushed to the emergency room, not for the first time over the previous months due to ongoing difficulty swallowing and breathing. I saw the doctor, as I had the previous time I had been taken to that particular hospital, and she treated me as though I was histrionic and suffering from an eating disorder. At one point the doctor even said that the reason she wasn't in my room more often was because she had actual emergencies to take care of. After I was finally given a room, the nurse told me that the doctor had also instructed her to give me Xanax, a medication toward which I had a severe reaction. The doctor knew about this reaction. In addition, when I was released the following morning, I was given prescriptions for anti-anxiety medication and antidepressants, and made to sign a paper promising that I would eat. As it turns out, I had mono and Lyme disease, which both cause issues with swelling in the throat plus an incredibly nasty sinus infection. When I was 17 years old, I went two weeks into the hospital for meningitis in a high security surveillance room. One day they brought an old man in and we chatted a bit. He was as tired as me, but not for the same reasons, obviously. Night comes and it's sleeping time. I wake up in the night and hear a loud but short sigh, but don't think much of it before going back to sleep. In the morning, the old man wasn't in the room anymore and I didn't realize what really happened until I experienced the death in my family. Sometimes I think about this man I shared the last conversation with and that makes me kind of sad. My first invasive major surgery happened outside of Ukraine during my study abroad trip. Ukraine has always had a bad reputation as a shady Eastern European country following the breakup of the Soviet Union. Cheap prostitutes, black market arms trades, goons in adidas tracksuits, etc. Still, it was nothing like this, and everyone in Ukraine at the time before the Russian conflict was hospitable and welcoming. It was nothing like what I had seen in Hostel or other typical Hollywood action movies that depict Ukraine as a lawless no-man's land. That is, until I went to the hospital. Again, there are private hospitals that come at a premium for tourists and oligarchs, and then there are the state hospitals. As an American student, I was labeled a premium, but the luxury private hospital that I was sent to didn't have the proper facilities for a major surgery, and I was shuttled off to the state hospital. As the student group was situated in Kiev, the city is as modern as any other European city. Within 10 miles, there are just birch tree forests and wide-ass freeway lanes. Ever seen a Russian dash cam? Something along those lines of cars barreling past each other, skipping over multiple lanes, etc. We finally arrive at the hospital, and it's a slab of concrete, just a 20-story concrete block with just windows punched out in the middle of the forest. I don't see a single building or business nearby. It's all gray and concrete. You know how there's normally a commotion outside of a hospital, with nurses running around and ambulances going in and out? Well, there was no one else in sight when we pull up in the ambulance, and on top of this surrealism, there's no goddamn ramp to the hospital entrance for the gurney. The EMTs have to lift me and carry me, lying straight on my back face up on the gurney for around 10 stairs, stop and take a break, then proceed to wheel me to the entrance. Even inside the hospital, there's no one around. There are rooms lit up, and I can only see the shadows of doctors, nurses, and patients I don't know behind the curtains. Again, I'm lying strapped to the gurney, so I have a limited range of visibility and I am staring at the ceiling. As we pass by further in the hallway, I just see some busted fluorescent lights dangling from the ceiling. 
Again, I still didn't see any doctors or nurses rushing over, just the EMTs wheeling me around. We head towards the elevator, and no shit, there was caution tape fluttering over the open elevator shaft. The EMTs were like, oh well, as if this wasn't the first time, and headed up another flight of stairs to get another elevator that was actually working on the opposite side of the hospital. At this point, I accepted that this was an organ harvesting black market hospital. I just wanted to get the anesthesia to end it. They cart me over to the pre-op room, which looks like a room in a typical hostel. Ikea dresser, twin size bed, not a medical bed, and I just lay down to maybe wait for the doctors. At this point, after 10 or 15 minutes, my American guide, who's in charge of the study abroad program, finally arrives. I mean, I was expecting goons to rush in and hold me down and sedate me. So when I finally saw someone who I recognized, it finally felt like this wasn't some dream. I was just relieved, and he told me I was going straight to the operation. Shortly after, I went to the operation room and woke up eight hours later with tubes coming out of my nose and stomach cavity. There were doctors along with my American guide at the foot of my bed, and the one surgeon who could speak English says, it was bad, very bad. I just looked down at my stomach, and there's just a running trail from my belly button to the top of my abdominal cavity of thick black stitches. Not the clear transparent ones, but the thick black ones that look like fishing wire. It turns out, what the doctors thought was appendicitis was actually a ruptured ulcer, and my stomach acid was leaking into my abdominal cavity, essentially burning the outside layer of my major organs, which explains the unimaginable pain. When they went in for the appendix and just saw pus, they realized it was a lot more severe, which is why they needed all the tubes post-op to drain the remaining pus out of my stomach cavity. I had to stay for a month and a half in a Ukrainian hospital, and outside of the isolation, the nurses were nice but professional. No small talk, except from one nurse who had a brother in the United States and was sincerely curious about American pop culture. Everyone still seemed to be concerned about my well-being and tried to work with whatever was available to make things somewhat comfortable. Still, the only unsettling moments were the first few nights. I was in my own isolated room with a single partition that was half a wall and a glass partition. I could see the other room next to me, but I couldn't really lift myself up to see above the wall. I was just flat on my bed. Still, every night, the man in the next room just groaned all night like either the sound of a large wounded animal or someone who just fell down a flight of stairs. I kept asking the nurses if the man's fine since he groans all night. Were there any night shift nurses who could help him? They just simply said, he's fine, just bad dreams. What? Then in a few days, when I woke up, I just saw the nurses cleaning up the room, laying out and flattening out the sheets on the bed. I was shook. I was like asking in Russian, did he pass? They just responded, he left. I know he left this actual room. I mean, I can clearly see he's gone, but like, did he die when I was sleeping? Then they just sort of laughed it off and kept saying in Ukrainian, he's gone. Jesus. I couldn't imagine. I was sleeping in the next room with a dying man and sleeping through his final death throes. In the end, I was able to leave with a seven inch scar running down my stomach and was able to finish studying abroad in St. Petersburg. The only silver lining of the story is that I would have been devastated by medical bills if I'd had the same surgery in the United States. So at least I'm grateful that my ulcer exploded at the right time in a country that wasn't the United States. At least I'm not paying the medical bills to this day. That is a pretty harrowing tale. I'm glad that you ended up okay and glad you didn't have to pay the ridiculous bills that you would have in a US hospital. So all's well that ends well, I guess? I wasn't a patient, but a visitor. An elderly lady in one room had a bout of severe gastro. She'd shat herself and messed her clothes up and bed. There were three other patients in the same room, all with family visiting. All these people start streaming out of this room, gagging and holding hands over their mouths. The room was directly in front of the nurse's station. The smell wafted out, and the nurses struggled not to gag. The unfortunate nurse who had the job of cleaning up the mess must have had a strong stomach, although she was green when she left the room. The poor old woman was suffering horrible stomach pains as well. It couldn't have been easy for her. Hopefully she didn't know that she'd made multiple people leave the room or that she'd caused half the room to stink of shit. 
I once got such a severe migraine that it made me feel kind of out of reality, and I saw a lot of lights and dots. Before I even knew it, I was already in the hospital being treated by a doctor. I couldn't understand any of the sentences he was telling me. He would repeatedly ask me to sit down, to tell me my name, what happened, etc. And I couldn't understand a single word. It's hard to explain, but it was like losing sight of reality. My mom got me there and helped me all the time we were there. That's why I know what the doctor was saying. What's funny about it is that I got prescribed common headache medicine and nothing happened afterwards. I still have a terrible migraine and went to sleep early, which helped me fully recover by the morning. I even remember playing Geometry Dash early in the morning, trying to process what happened the day before at the same time. My son fractured his femur during a seizure. It's horrible, but can happen, especially with kids with cerebral palsy who are not weight-bearing, like he is. He had to have his cast redone because the top of it was digging into his thigh really badly. He's non-verbal and takes total care, so I asked for him to be sedated and monitored so he wouldn't be a pain and could relax. They were admitting him to the hospital because they were afraid he had something else going on as well. Ortho decided against it, and loaded him up with hefty doses of morphine and toradol. They redo the cast and he's admitted. A day later, they're talking about discharging him, but I'm noticing he's working super hard to breathe. His oxygen saturation is crap, like 89 to 90 percent on four liters of oxygen. They move him to the medical floor at a separate site because of all the construction they're doing at the hospital. I didn't feel comfortable because the PICU is at the main hospital and he's not looking great. He was a micro preemie. He's 12, but has crappy lungs, and I know him well enough to know when things look dicey. We get to the medical floor and he absolutely tanks within a few hours. His respiratory rate hits the 50s. His sats are in the high 80s, and he's working super hard to breathe, and he has formula from three hours before sitting in his stomach he has a G-tube, so I could see how much was in his stomach. He decompensated even further, and I'm absolutely freaking out, fairly convinced he's about to end up on a ventilator. Thankfully, he and respiratory therapist was phenomenal and basically took charge and got him the equipment he needed. The x-ray, broad, and also entirely collapsed left lung. They didn't move him back to the main hospital the next night. He decompensated even worse than the night before and ended up at the PICU at 1 a.m. because they couldn't stabilize him. It was the first time since the NICU that I really thought I was going to lose him. He spent 20 days in the hospital and 18 in the PICU, the absolute scariest thing I've been through besides his first few weeks of life. This came out of absolutely nowhere. I guess he aspirated while he was loaded up on morphine and collapsed his left lung. I never want to go through that again. When I was staying in the hospital for my double lung transplant, I got pretty sick. I got lung failure in my sleep, which led to heart failure, which made my arms and legs retain a lot of water. So I was barely able to lift my arms and was unable to walk. I had to go to ECMO and be intubated with a trach, some chest tubes, IVs, and other lines. They had to be careful that I didn't aspirate things, so I couldn't eat, fed via feeding tube that I had for about eight years and hadn't gotten the piece that let me talk. Every morning a nurse would clean me and change my dressings, but apparently the one I had one morning hadn't gotten the memo that I had my feeding tube for years, so she kept trying to dress it. I kept panicking because they changed the dressings every 24 hours, and I didn't want my feeding tube to be covered up for that long because if it was not turned every once in a while, I was told it could make me pretty sick. When I tried to explain this to her on my whiteboard, she kept denying that it was true and continued to try and dress it up. So I told her to wake up my dad who was in the room sleeping. She looked at him, seemed anxious, and said no. I think it was because I was still 17 and a minor, so she probably wrote me off as a scared or something. So, I'm making any frantic noises I can at my dad to wake him up, as she's ignoring me until finally my dad wakes up 
and I write down what I've been trying to tell her, and he agrees. She finally accepts it and doesn't dress it. I told everyone there to never let me get her again, LMAO. Maternity Hospital I'm in one birthing room, having just given birth to my third baby. The boy was a bit bigger than expected and went legs first, so it was challenging, but apart from me having to get some stitches, it went well and the baby was healthy. So the doctors are having a sort of hi-fi moment when the alarm goes off in the room next door. There was another birth in progress, and the woman's womb ruptured or something like that. Extremely dangerous condition. Basically, you go for an emergency C-section as fast as possible. Everyone rushed over. I hear commotion, but that sort of quiet, professional commotion. Everyone doing their job, but extremely fast. Nurses running. I'm left with my fresh baby in my arms, knowing that next door another baby is probably dying. They saved her and the baby. It was a lucky day, but for like 45 minutes I was waiting there thinking about the other mom and her baby. And I'm also waiting for someone to stitch me up. 